What's up, guys? What's happening? Let me remove that. Let's see who we got in the chat tonight. Uh, what's this? What's up, Will Thomas? What's going on? Give me a second here. Let's check this out. So... <clears throat> Uh, we got Mr. VHS DVD Blu-ray up in the house tonight. Just chilling. Mr. Max is playing Wii Sports. <clears throat> Mr. Starling Toribio. What's up, man? Will World. What's up, guys? <clears throat> Figured I'd hop on for a little bit just to chit chat because I haven't been online for a little bit. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about a couple of reviews that I dropped this week. I dropped the review for for Collateral this week. Actually, I dropped it like last night. Matter of fact, I think I dropped it around like one o'clock or something like that last night. One of my favorite one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies, Collateral. Four K Blu Ray. <clears throat> Which I don't think a lot of people have seen. But this is, let me uh, share that screen there. I mean, how many times has Tom Cruise played a bad guy? But he's a good bad guy in this. Awesome bad guy. I'm going to say like my two, my two favorite like uh, Tom Cruise movies. Collateral and uh, Tropic Thunder. I thought they were gonna do a uh, like a spinoff of Tropic Thunder where he played uh, man his name skips my his character's name but awesome awesome character in Tropic Thunder he's a dick in Tropic Tropic Thunder and he's kind of a you know, he's a bad guy in Collateral unfortunately with Collateral it wasn't the biggest wasn't the biggest upgrade as far as 4K transfers go. I was expecting. Uh, I was actually. I wasn't expecting that much of an increase, but it was still good, though. It was still a. Uh, it was a noticeable increase if you if you watch the movie enough times and you kind of bounce back and forth, then you can you can see what the differences were for sure. Um, but fortunately, only only collateral had a five point one mix. I was a little bummed about that. I wanted it to be at least a like a DTS X mix. But we didn't get it, man. Man, I was kind of bummed about that. Still, still a good solid transfer overall. Like, I liked it. I've, I watched that movie like once a year or so. Very much like Heat. Like, I watch Heat once a year. You know, that, that gun shootout scene down the street outside of the bank. You know, Michael Mann. Michael Mann has that L.A. noir type of type of film look to his movies. And uh, Collateral is right right there, man. Just like Just like Heat. Uh, audio is just like he too. Every time they shoot the guns, like he must, he must record the sound off the set because it sounds like legit, like he, like you're actually there. <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, man, yo, check out Collateral if you guys haven't seen Collateral. Tom Cruise bad guy, awesome role, awesome 4K. I want to say awesome 4K Blu-ray disc, but awesome movie though. For sure, awesome movie. Maybe wait till it drops to like ten bucks or something like that. At like the the ten dollar Walmart bin or Best Buy bin or something like that, or Amazon. Pick it up then. But definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen Collateral on 4K Blu-ray or Blu-ray in general. Sweet movie. I love that movie. One of my favorite movies. One of my favorite movies of all time. I can like always. I can always just just pop in anytime and just watch it and just watch it all the way through. What's up, man? What's up, Fred215? What's happening? <clears throat> uh, Christopher Alvarado. How's it going, Shane? I was wondering, should I buy the Total Recall 4K Blu-ray? Is it really worth it? Uh, Total Recall. Recall, recall, recall. This is a... So they give you one of these little dealies. This is a fridge magnet. It says recall. For the memory of a lifetime. Fridge magnet, right there. <clears throat> then they give you a, they give you this little pamphlet here. Don't let, don't let life pass you by. So I went to recall, 
Recall is a real place, and this is the this is the pamphlet they give you. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think it's a good. Is it worth an upgrade? I mean, it's definitely better. It's definitely better than the older Blu-ray for sure. Uh, the audio is, oh man, audio is all right, I guess. I mean, if you want to jack your subs up louder than normal, then I guess it's all right. I mean, you know, visually, I guess it's a uh, yeah, it's a, it's the best looking that you can get right now. It's not like mind bending or anything like that. What is it? Is it supposed to be the mind bending edition? It's uh, I don't even know. This is just it's just like the regular. It's just like the regular. It doesn't say mind bending edition. I don't know what the mind bending edition is, but this is just the regular 4K Blu-ray. But it's uh, you know, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good looking disc. It's an alright disc. Nothing mind blowing, but pick it up though, man. If you if you're a fan of the movie, definitely the best way to watch it. Like I said, it's not like crazy or not like that. Pick it up though. Oh, we are. I am giving this away though. If you are part of Patreon, if you're on a Patreon this month, uh, we are giving away Total Recall this month on Patreon. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, Total Recall, right there. We're giving that away. We gave away, gave away a Full Metal Jacket, a little digital code earlier as well on uh, Patreon. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, then uh, you know, drop your comment in if you want to get a copy of Total Recall on 4K Blu-ray. Also, Shane, I would like to know if you are planning to get a Lumigen video processor in for a review. Most people think it is just for HDR tone mapping, and is so much more than that. Um, am I gonna get? Am I gonna get a Lumigen? Not right now. We are working on getting a house. Hopefully soon. Hopefully early next year. Maybe middle next year. So I mean, my 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 home theater spending is gonna have to be very low to like zero for the time being. Um, maybe once I move out of there, then maybe I'll pick up a Lumigen. But as of right now, not in the books. So I don't I don't think so. Definitely, no, I'm not gonna get one. I'm, you know, unless somebody wants to give me like a crazy deal on one, then maybe. But I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get one. Hello, how are you today? I have a question. The Hobbit 4K, is it any good? And audio is better than the normal Blu-ray. I haven't seen any of the Hobbit 4K Blu-rays yet. I mean, I've got them, but I haven't watched them. I watched Fellowship of the Ring before I came on here, and uh, but I haven't watched. I haven't watched the rest of the movies. I mean, I watched a little bit of the Two Towers, and I watched, I skimmed through the um, uh, Part Three, Lord of the Rings, uh, Return of the King, but I haven't, uh, I haven't watched the Hobbit movies just yet. So I can't tell you, man. I don't know. I haven't seen them. Don't know. <clears throat> well, what do we got here? Should I set legacy audio focus as small or large? Uh, I'm not sure of the question. Legacy audio focus. I'm not sure what that is. Unless you're talking about speakers. <coughs> My 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 B F U B eight twenty splurge just showed up today. Oh, congrats! Can't wait to swap out my old X eight hundred. Yeah, man, it's an awesome player. That's a good player. It's just like the like a little baby version of the U B nine thousand. Definitely the probably like the second best player that you can get besides the nine thousand. I mean, unless you have like a like an Oppo two or three or something like that, you know. Even so, like I got rid of my 203 and kept the 9000. Like I thought the image was better. Although the 203 plays more formats, like MKVs and all that good stuff. Dolby Vision on MKVs, which the Panasonic Panasonic players don't do. So I do kind of miss that. Um. Da, 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 da. Max Jonak, is 4K disc Atmos better than standard Blu-ray Atmos in your opinion? They should be, they're like exactly the same. They're like exactly the same. I mean, it's, uh, they're both like uh, lossless on either one. So 
same track, the only thing really different is going to be the video quality from the Blu-ray and the Atmos version. <clears throat> Mr. Fred, I could just picture in your new house, your home theater being more awesome. Yeah, man, we got some plans. We got some plans. We'll see what happens. We shall see what happens once I get up out of here. You know, not that I hate my home theater now, but it could definitely be like three times bigger. For sure. What movies have the best IMAX show? I'm not sure what's going on with StreamYard today. It's weird. We'll get an excellent connection. I'm not sure where I'm cutting out like that. When are you getting together with Anthem? When? What? Oh, when's your get together with Anthem happening? Uh, as far as like the new Anthem pre pros, I think we're looking at sometime in, I think in December, they said. I don't think I don't think they're they're not sending out any like review review units until until January. So as far as I know, none of the none of the reviewers are getting anything like anytime soon. I think if you pre-ordered uh, an Anthem Pre Pro, then uh, you'll get you'll get it this month. But as far as um, like reviewers, you know, the word is that January is going to be the time for for uh, for reviews that you'll see on like youtube and like uh you know publications and stuff like that so too bad you know because um i'm uh, they got me down for the uh for the big one for the big boy what is it the avm 90 or something like that i can't i can't think of the model number off my head but they got me down for the uh for their for their best one good evening shane how was your thanksgiving my thanksgiving was Good. What did I do for Thanksgiving? You know what? We had, uh, what do we do for Thanksgiving? We had a good Thanksgiving. You know, good Thanksgiving. Didn't really do anything special. We had, we had some food. We had some food. Just That's that's about it. Just me and, the, me and the wife. That's about it. Um, Have I, Shane, have you checked out GOT on 4K Blu-ray? Just grabbed the box set, but haven't checked... Haven't had a chance to view it yet. I uh, Game of Thrones. I haven't. I've only seen. I've only seen episode one and three of Game of Thrones. I haven't. I don't watch the show. I, I never got into it, so I can't really say if it's good or bad. I've never. I've never seen it on four K. I've only seen it on standard HD on on HBO when it when it first first came out a while back. So I can't say. Can't say how good it is. <clears throat> um david rojas for yeah man mrx 540 how much is the 540 it was like 1700 dollars or something like that what amp do you recommend via unbalanced connections also what rca cables brand do you recommend what do i'm for unbalanced connections i really really depends on how much you want to spend like if you ask me um you probably don't want to ask me what kind of amp i would recommend because it might be too much money <laughs> so you really got to give like a dollar amount how much how much you're willing to spend <clears throat> i mean you can get them anywhere from like 500 bucks up to you know like fifty thousand dollars or more any idea why there's really no reviews on youtube on the new monitor audio bronze 500 in english at least nobody seems to do much of monitor audio yeah you know i reached out to uh i reached out to monitor audio a while back but uh you know and i don't think i i don't think i ever got a response back so that could be a thing i mean there are a lot of companies that you know you always hear about but they just don't you know 
you don't see a lot of videos on their products. There's usually a lot of like written reviews that you can find from like, uh, you know, if it's like a UK brand or something like that, you can always find like something on what high fire or whatever. But as far as like video reviews, I don't, I don't think a lot of the brands are on board with YouTube videos yet. Like, cause they don't understand that, uh, the, uh, the, the positive results that you can get from, from loaning out products to YouTubers. So I think you'll find most of the stuff that, uh, you know, brands like little, little niche brands are going to be more like written stuff or maybe on like forums, like AVS forums or, or AV science or something like that, or maybe just normal users that are just like kind of just showing off their stuff. So, I mean, I mean, there's some good, there's some good content from like normal, normal, average, everyday people that just buy the stuff and talk about it. Um, rather than like people like myself that, you know, get a, get a bunch of different things. So, I mean, there's, there's always like that, that avenue as well. But, but like I said, I mean, a lot of the brands that, uh, you know, you no normally don't hear about, uh, sometimes they just don't understand the value in doing video reviews, but I think, I think times are changing a little bit though. So I'm sure you'll see him. I'm sure you'll see him coming up soon. Maybe, maybe next year. We'll see. I'll try to hit him up again and see if I can get a, get a monitor audio home theater system in or something like that. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Devin, what's up, Devin Chain? Thoughts on the Revel Performa B Tower and Center loudspeakers? I've heard nothing but good. I hear, I hear the uh, Revel speakers are supposed to be like awesome speakers. I mean, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen too many reviews on them, but all the written reviews that I've ever read about Revel speakers, they're like supposed to be phenomenal speakers. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they use beryllium tweeters as well, like the uh, Paradigms and the Focals. So they're supposed to be pretty neutral sounding, pretty, very accurate. Um, I think the design, like for me, the design of those speakers, I'm not like a fan of those, fan of the look, but I guess they measure extremely well and they're supposed to sound, they're supposed to sound phenomenal. So, um, you know, I guess if you're thinking about picking them up, I get, you know, everything that I've read, it sounds like you would be all right to go that way. I know we were supposed to get some in for for audioholics, which we might still do. I don't know. Uh, after maybe after I wrap up the focal review for them, then maybe we'll try to get some Revel speakers in. That was the that was the plan a couple months back, but we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> What Adventure Time, the complete collection on Blu-ray for 90 bucks. I think it's a worthy purchase over DVD. You know, anything in Blu-ray over DVD is definitely like a six-time visual upgrade for sure. Hi, Shane. I always wanted to ask, are separates that much better compared to high-end receiver? I'm thinking about the 8500H. Or just take the plunge on separates if they are worth it. Um... I use separates. Uh, I think there's a value in separates. It really depends on what you're, what you're willing to spend in your budget. Um, you know, you ask me. Yeah, I think there's a huge upgrade from separates. I mean, there is a huge upgrade over separates. It's just uh, kind of a fact. Unless you buy like a really cheap amplifier and underpowered amp, then it doesn't sound that great. But, but yeah, man, there's big, there's pretty big difference if you get a nice nice amplifier and a nice preamp. There's a pretty big difference between a receiver and a and going separates. So I mean, if you're gonna do separates, then do separates. Uh, you know, that's the way to do it. You no, know, get the best amp you can get, and then get to uh, then you know, listen. If you if you want to, if there's any any uh, category that you want to skimp on, you know, I would say skimp on the processor and spend most of your budget on the amplifier because the amplifiers will likely outlive your processor so get the best amplifiers you can get and then uh you know if you can't afford the very best processor that you can afford then maybe get like the step down or or two steps down or something like that but definitely spend the most money on your amplifier because the uh the amps are going to last you you know if you get a good one it's going to last you almost a lifetime unless you blow it up or something <clears throat> um, Philip 
Chang, are you going to make a review for the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit Extended Trilogy 4Ks? Regards, the Philippines. I, yeah, so I, I, like I said, I told the other gentleman earlier that I did watch uh, Fellowship of the Rings a little earlier, and it's a, it's not a right movie. It's not a right looking movie. I don't, I think I've read a lot of reviews or I've seen a lot of uh, chatter about the Lord of the Rings transfers that they're like one of the best that has come out this year which they are definitely far from the best that have come out this year they're good looking they're they're 100 better than the blu-rays but they are definitely not like the best looking 4k blu-rays blu-ray transfers this year audibly audibly yeah they're, they're rocking they got a rocking atmos track i would say like reference quality tracks but visually uh listen there's a bunch of dnr in all three of these movies there there just is it's not they're pretty soft too i mean a lot of the stuff that i've seen in fellowship of the ring is pretty soft a lot of and some of the stuff i you know i skimmed through two towers pretty soft as well um listen if you're if you're somebody that wants that 4k crispiness yo you ain't you ain't gonna get it with this it's just not happening especially fellowship of the ring um i only, I only saw like maybe like two minutes of Return of the King, so I, I can't really make a judgment on that, though. But um, but as far as these Lord of the Ring movies uh, being like like reference quality discs, no, 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 no. They ain't reference quality discs. If you have some kind of a, a nostalgia because you love Lord of the Rings then, and you, you've been living with the Blu-ray quality, then yeah, that's like way better than the uh, way better than the Blu-rays. But as far as like a if I was going to put them up against a top quality 4K disc this year, even like, uh, what just came out recently, like Blade, Blade is an awesome looking disc. I would say, at least for Fellowship of the Ring, I would say Fellowship of the Ring is a notch below, notch below Blade as far as like detail and stuff like that. And like color and everything. Uh, audio is definitely better than Blade, but visually, visually, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think it's better than Blade. Um, even like bloodshot bloodshot like blows it away as far as like detail and everything like detail sharpness clarity and all that uh like bloodshot rocks it too um i mean don't get me wrong i i, I did like the look of it but it was it was pretty soft kind of a pretty soft kind of blurry here and there um i don't know i guess i guess i don't know if i'm going to do the review or not like lord of the rings is one of those movies like harry potter for me where it's like uh whichever version i'm watching whether it's three hours or four hours it takes me multiple sittings <laughs> to go through a movie because i will i will i will fall asleep multiple times on lord of the rings i mean i stayed i think i fell asleep week the first time i saw it which was fellowship of the ring which was back in when it came out 2000 2001 or something i remember seeing that on christmas i saw it on christmas and uh i fell asleep on it the first time first time it came out <laughs> at the theater and uh i'm not saying it's a bad movie it's just really long and uh i don't know man so i've uh, you know i haven't uh i haven't decided yet i mean they're all right looking discs i you know i see you know sometimes i'll scroll on facebook and people drop their screen caps or on twitter you see all like the uh forbes or whatever they take their little screen caps and it's always like they take a picture of like the best looking part of the movie but what about the other 85 percent of the movie where it's kind of soft and there's like dnr in the movie i mean come on man like why don't you talk about that and then uh no nah, man it's a it's a it's an all right looking disc it's a nice it's a nice transfer it's a worthy upgrade over the blu-ray definitely worthy upgrade over the blu-ray but nothing that would make me say 100 percent go out man this is a reference quality disc reference quality because it's a uh... no man they ain't reference quality discs at least not from the first one that i saw it wasn't reference quality so we'll see we'll see what the uh future holds i mean i still got i still got a couple tech reviews i'm gonna wrap up <coughs> maybe i'll do like one or two next week but you know my mind my mind hasn't been blown enough to to uh want to spend uh, the next four or five hours editing a video 
But uh, what are your thoughts? Look, listen, who who's seen Lord of the Rings today? Who picked up Lord of the Rings on 4K today or Hobbit? Like, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? How do you think the transfers look on your display? And what kind of display are you guys watching it on? Are you watching on a television set? Are you watching it on a projector? Leave your comments. Let me know what you think about the Lord of the Rings transfers on 4K. Hobbit or Lord of the Rings on 4K. Uh, what else we got here? <clears throat> Any future reviews on BenQ projectors? Mm, I don't know. I mean, BenQ has been sending me like like computer monitors for whatever reason. Like, I don't review computer monitors, but they send me computer monitors though. So I don't know, man. We've been trying to get, we've been trying to get uh, that new ultra short throw, but. Uh, I I think uh, I think the next projector I'll probably review might be the LG. I think there's a new LG one coming out, which I'm supposed to be in line to get. There's like a new like DLP 4K upscaling LG projector. So I guess I guess be on the lookout for that one. It was supposed to come like I think this week or maybe possibly next week. <clears throat> Uh, what else we got here? What are the best? No. Who's this guy? Oh, we got Elias in the chat here. Elias is in chat. Listen, anybody got, uh, if anybody has questions about Klipsch, drop them in the comments right now. We will address any Klipsch comments or questions. Elias will address any Klipsch questions. So, and drop them in the comments below. <coughs> Yo, Shane, did you see the Wonder Woman news? Yes, I did. I posted on my community tab. I think, Christian, you missed that one. Juan Brana agreed with the softness, but I think it was probably the best they could have done with a 20-year-old movie with 20-year-old CGI. I like the HDR and the color tone, but agree. See that? I believe Lord of the Rings came out in 2001. Correct me if I'm uh, wrong on that one. And I also believe that Blade came out in 1998. And I'm 100% sure that Blade looks better than than uh lord of the rings so for an even 23 year old movie whatever uh you could do better you could definitely do better i mean I, i've heard that uh peter jackson wanted to do i think he might have wanted to get rid of some of the grain to make it look more more digital like and uh so i think maybe that's what happened In any case, you know, that's the, uh, that's what it looks like. You know, it's not terrible looking. It's a nice, still a nice looking transfer. <clears throat> any thoughts on calibration with the Room EQ Wizard? Do you use it? Yeah, I use, uh, I use Room EQ for Wizard for my subwoofers. I usually do the calibration on my subs and then I let the room correction on the uh, the processor or receiver do the rest. So I always calibrate my subs first and then I then I let the uh, the pre pro take care of the rest. Your dates are correct. Oh, look at that, my dates are correct. I'll forget them in a week or so. Seeing speakers in their specs saying 200 watts at 6 or 6, then say compatible with 8 ohms, confused. Yeah, I mean, if you got a modern day receiver, uh, you'll be fine running at like 6 six ohms. Listen, if your speakers are like 2 ohms, then you're going to be pro most likely overdriving your AVR. But it'll still work though, just don't drive it too hard though, you know what I mean? But listen... Your 8 ohm AVR or amp will be fine with a with a 6 ohm load. 
do you like your iPhone 12 or are you going to switch back to Android? Oh, no, I'm going to definitely switch back to Android once Android comes out with a cool enough phone. But for the time being, I'm going to I'm going to stick it out with iPhone. Uh, so we'll see what we'll see what 2021 brings. But yeah, man, iPhone's got some iPhone's got some faults, but we're not going to talk about iPhone today. I'll just, I'll just keep answering a couple more questions before I log off. <clears throat> that's the uh, yeah, that's the question of the day. Have I seen Hobbit? No, I have not seen Hobbit yet. I haven't seen Hobbit yet. Like I said, I still got to watch the other two, the other two Lord of the Rings movies. Oh yeah, let's talk about uh, this really quick. Hold on, I forgot to bring it up. <clears throat> so where is it? Ba -ba -ba, Three what's today's date? Not November, we're in December. So this is on Collider. I guess I guess we're plugging Collider today. So yeah, so right now, man, you Wonder Woman, which is dropping on Christmas, HBO is gonna do whatever it takes to make sure your home viewing experience for Wonder Woman 1984 is going to be movie theater quality-esque. So HBO Max has announced that Wonder Woman 84 will be shown in Ultra HD, HDR10, Dolby Vision, and Dolby Atmos on HBO Max. So you are going to be able to experience the highest quality in streaming on HBO Max come December 25th. I don't I don't think HBO Max has set a date if it's gonna this upgrade is gonna happen before HBO Max or if it's going to happen just legit just for Wonder Woman 84. I'm hoping they kind of upgrade before that, but you know it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. But anyways, we are gonna get Wonder Woman 84 in 4K Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. So excited for that. I wanted to go see it at the theaters because listen, watching this movie only in HD would have been a bummer but now I could just stay home in my underwear and watch watch it in my own home theater with the best quality and we can e even do a review on it so be on the lookout for review on December 26 for the 4k quality which you know who knows what the HBO max streaming quality is going to be like in 4k is it going to be like Amazon Prime 4k quality or is it going to be like iTunes quality. I always find that Amazon Prime's 4K HDR quality is kind of subpar, but I do find the iTunes is pretty darn good looking. It's, it's the closest that I've seen to physical quality. So if HBO Max is anything like that, then it's a safe bet that the physical version will be very similar in its physical quality as well. So I am excited for that. Are you guys excited for that? Are you guys going to still watch it at the cinemas or are you going to watch it at home on your own home theaters? You know, with the whole COVID thing happening, home theaters seem like they should be taken off right now to experience all these, all these straight to digital movies. I mean, I hope that more digital movies don't come out next year and that everything kind of, kind of, evens out as far as the pandemic is concerned but right now man we, it looks like we're gonna get some good stuff man wonder woman 84 hopefully black widow comes out on streaming you know we still get some good tv shows you know, like the mandalorian and all that stuff i think they pushed batman out to 2022 which kind of stinks but i guess it's a smart move though but um yeah man like what are your thoughts on wonder woman 84 on HBO Max, I, sh I should say that HBO Max 1080p quality is pretty good too. Like I was watching, what was I watching? What's that? Uh, Raised by Wolves. I was watching Raised by Wolves on HBO Max and it looked pretty good. Like I thought I was like sitting there. I was talking to, uh, you know, Brass Tax on the phone. I was like, this HBO stream looks really close to 4K. Either that or the projector is doing a excellent job of upscaling this hd hd stream 
it wasn't as bright as a as an HD stream as a you know HDR stream, but um, like detail wise for an HD 1080p stream, it, it was really good looking. So I would only imagine that their 4K quality should be that much better. And I've been streaming. Uh, I've been watching Titans and Doom Patrol, and I watched Black Christmas. Black Christmas wasn't that good looking, actually. But Black Christmas was kind of bad looking. But like those other shows that I want, that I just mentioned, really good quality for for 1080p. So I mean, you know, I got uh, I got some high hopes for for HBO Max when it goes all out on their on their 4K HDR upgrade. It would, you know, it's a still a smart move because the Snyder Cut is coming sometime in 2021, so they got to get ready for that too. Like, if you want to get uh, if you want to get these home theater enthusiasts out there that have spent all this money to stay home during COVID nineteen, we need to we need to subscribe to HBO Max so we can watch all these new uh, direct streaming movies in the home theater for the best quality. So yeah, leave the leave your comments down below. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think about this whole thing, man. Uh, Wonder Woman 84, 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Are you expecting the Atmos quality to be good as the original Wonder Woman? Which I didn't think it was that great. But do you think it's going to be as good or better than that? Leave a comment down below and tell us what you're expecting for Wonder Woman 84 and HBO Max. <clears throat> What else we got here? David Burr. 85 inch TVs are almost under a thousand dollars. Going to the cinema is dead. Yeah, what's what can you get for 85 inches nowadays? I haven't been I haven't been to Best Buy in forever. I'm assuming uh Sony's got like a well like a nine hundred H or something like that. Probably for a good price. I'm still rocking the uh 75 900 f how many people have a sony 900f in the chat right now uh 1500 1500 bucks 85 inch lcd tv better blacks than the theater better colors than the theater man david you must have a sh crappy theater over there What's this here? Shane, what are your top 10 Ultra HD Blu-ray movies so far? Mine are Flash, Gordon, Coming to America, Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, you know, I got Beverly Hills Cop too. I haven't watched it yet though. Coming to America. No, I don't have Coming to America. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, Dawn of the Dead, 1978, Second Sight Edition, and Lawrence of Arabia in Gandhi. You got some old school movies there. All right, yeah, not a single one of those are on my top 10 list. <laughs> That's for sure. I know that. I mean, I don't have a top 10 list now, but I know not a single one of those are on the top 10. So, so we got a totally different list there, Devin. <coughs> uh, World, World World has got a 900. Yeah, yo, my 900, my 900, 900, uh, 900 F still, still looks, uh, still looks phenomenal. And I don't even see, I don't even see bleeding on my TV. I mean, I see very minimal in the corners, but very minimal on the, the letterbox bars, though. Really impressive. I don't think I ever did a review on that TV either. That was, that was a couple years ago now. Um, Arjun, Shane, what is your audio and video AVR full setup? Um... What's my full setup? What am I using right now? I've got the Trinov, I got the Mac amps, I got the Kaleidoscape, and there's a PD. So those are those are there's what I'm using. That's what I got right now. Oh, and the the Bowers and Wilkins speakers, and the SVS PB16s, and I got a couple rels up front. So that's what we're rolling with. That's what we're rolling with this year. It's most likely going to be that way for probably the foreseeable future i mean the speakers might switch out but i think the uh i think the hardware is going to stay i mean the uh the processor and the amp is probably going to stay the same for the time being unless unless uh you know turn off comes out with something better and or the amps or megatos comes out with some better amps or something like that 
that's within my budget. Um, what up, Hugh Jass in the house? What's up, Hugh Jass? Uh, Joker and Tenet will be in the top 10. Remember, the top 10 is based on audio and video quality. Not just video quality alone, but both. It's going to be on both audio and video. So I think that's going to automatically eliminate Tenet. Which Tenet should be, I think Tenet should be coming in this week or maybe early next week. They, they said next week, um, I don't know, he emailed me last week and was like, yeah, we're going to send you Tenet next week, which I think is this week. So I'll probably get it early next week. But Tenet, Tenet was my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Actually, no. Dunkirk was my least favorite. And then I would say Tenet is above that one. As far as my list of uh, Nolan movies. I'm sure it's going to look really nice, though, because he shot like most of it in IMAX. But not my favorite. Not my favorite movie. I thought it was kind of predictably predictable type of thing. But, you know, it's a different story. <clears throat> Jacob Silguero. I know you're still reviewing the RX V6A, but wondering if you come across any HDMI issues playing DVD or Blu-ray 4K. I bought it and have been having some weird issues. The only issues I've been, uh, I'm almost done with that review, actually. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Audioholics, I think, probably tomorrow. The only issue that I had with HDMI, but I, I can't get it to, I can't get it to do it anymore. I was getting, I was getting this problem where I would start a movie if it was in Atmos. And it would take about 60 seconds to, to lock on. But after turning on and off the TV, then it, it started working again. That happened kind of periodically other than that you know it's been working kind of fine though but i haven't really had haven't really had any other issues besides that and hdmi 2.1 features aren't working and i think they have to unlock that with the firmware update so they're you know can't really test that either but yeah i mean it's been working fine for me i've been using it in the theater and I, right now we're using it to power i got the full cal speakers in the living room i got the um the sopra ones for the left and right and the two backs and the sopra center and those speakers are uh you know they they deserve a lot of power but you know that amplifier that receiver is doing doing a decent enough job to make them sound good so i mean for 600 bucks or, or 550 right now i think it's on sale uh not bad not bad not a bad little receiver i wish it looked better but it's still not a bad receiver, though. Rob James, hi Shane. Did you make the rack that holds your Atmos speakers, or are they specific mounts? I yeah, I made that myself. I took a sheet of wood. It was like a little. I don't know what the dimensions are, but it was just like a little sheet of wood. And uh, actually, you know, I took um, I took one of those shelves that you can get at Home Depot. It's like a shelf. It's like a shelf like ye big maybe like like a four foot shelf by by two feet i think it was and i just cut that in half so it was like an even like two by two square and then i screwed that to the ceiling and then i took it depends on how your speakers are set up too i took uh i took some chains you know that picture hang from i think it's a chain that you can buy for like a lamp I took that that chain and I, I screwed it to the screw holes on the bottom of the speaker and into the back of the speaker so it kind of hangs on chains and I, you can angle it you know with the chain since it's kind of the chain has like loops you can kind of uh, pick your length of chain and you can angle it to where you want so that's that's how I hung my Atmos speakers so I didn't buy a mount for it I made it myself with a piece of wood and maybe three dollars worth of a link chain from Home Depot. It was, it was cheap. It was cheap and simple. But, you know, it might be a little harder to do depending on where where or if your speaker has has mounting points on the speakers themselves. If you don't, then I, I guess you either can't mount it or you're going to have to drill into your speakers, which I don't think many people like to do. 
<clears throat> um, it says, Williams World, will you be reviewing Game of Thrones 4K Series Collection? No. We'll not be doing that. Towers as surrounds will never make sense to me. Mm, I guess so. I guess if you uh I guess if you got a big enough space. I see a lot of people do towers as surrounds. I mean if I had a big room. Um if I had a big room, I don't know if I would still do towers or not. You know. If we had a big room and it was just me by myself and nobody else was ever gonna come in the room, then then I would probably do, do towers. But I would like melt them in the wall so you wouldn't be able to see them. Thoughts on Macintosh Pre Pro? Not too many reviews, just spec videos. Um, well, I know the uh, I know the MX one hundred and sixty is a basically just a slightly souped up Marantz eighty eight hundred five, and the MX one hundred and seventy is an MP sixty Lingdorf with i think whatever whatever dax that macintosh are using i think that's really the only difference between those two but i guess if you wanted to just get the visual aesthetics of macintosh pre-pro then then go that route but i think if you want to save a little bit of money you can just buy a lingdorf which is something like maybe eighteen thousand dollars or an 8805 which is like four four and a half thousand dollars but uh, they're just, uh, they're basically just rebrands in Macintosh shells. But, you know, they, you know, they both get really good reviews, though. 80 out of 5s get good reviews, and so do, so do the Lingdorf processors. Uh, Beetlejuice 300 and Whiplash in top 10, possibly. 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 At least, at least one of those are probably going to be in the top 10. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about Middle Earth? Are those Dolby Atmos speakers? Are those Dolby Atmos speakers that go on top of the front speakers good at all? I know in ceiling are probably the best, but I feel they won't be effective enough to bounce up wall opinion. Um, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the bouncing speakers. I mean, I've reviewed a few of them, and none of them have been like, like fantastic sounding. I mean, it really depends on if you can mount speakers on your ceiling or, or not, or if you can drill walls holes in your ceiling. If you can't, then that's really the only option that you got. So pick a good one. The um the Kef one, the Kefs were okay, and the Rendels were were decent as well. I mean, and then again, it really depends on your ceiling. Like, you, you really, you have to have a flat ceiling. If you don't have a flat ceiling, then it's not going to work for you. <clears throat> Do you think that THX cable sound better, or is it just marketing? <laughs> uh, nah, man. I think I think you're I think you're safe buying a non-THX cable. I think you're safe with that. I mean, I've got some THX cables. I got some THX RCA cables from from Liberty, which I still use. They they work fine. Nice quality build, but yeah, man, you're fine. You're fine with regular. Get some, uh, get some, get some uh, mono price cables or something like that. If you, uh, you know, if you want to save save some dough. Leland Talbert, what's up, Leland? What's up, buddy? You're up late. It's twelve thirty. <clears throat> uh, John Lim, did you install diffusers in your HT yet? I, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna get some diffusers in there, but like I said, we don't plan on staying here for that much longer, so I didn't want to invest in doing anything like that. So, no. Uh, thanks. Still saving for that Trinov sixteen. Yeah, man. Once you get that, let us know. Hey, listen. Once you get that. I would say if you're part of my Patreon, I get you a discount on the Trinov 16. But uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you're on my Patreon, though, buddy. Well, once you want to get that discount, you sign up for Patreon, I get you a disc. What's up, bro? Love the channel. 
appreciate that. Uh, curious why you switched out your Arendel speakers to BMWs, and do you still have the Arendels or the BMWs that much better? Why did I switch out the Arendels? Uh, I switched out the Arendels just because uh, you know I get I get new speakers in all the time. That's the only reason why I get it in there. So um, I've been looking for something to replace the, the Bowers and Wilkins, but I haven't come across anything yet. I would like to get something that, you know, with the with the Bowers that I have right now, the BWs, they they all match. So they all have the kind of like the, the best sound as far as like surround and everything, since they're all exactly the same speaker. So I'm looking for something that I can do the, you know, the same type of setup with. So I want to get the same matching speakers all around. Something that's going to be easily mountable and also that could be placed on stands if need be. And then if I do, if they are like wonderful sounding, then I'll keep them in the, uh, I'll keep them in the next theater whenever that happens. So it's not that the it's not that the B and W sound better than the Arendels or vice versa, but just uh, you know I get uh, I get different stuff in all the time. And if I have the opportunity to try something different, then I'm going to try something different. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to always hear me talking about rental speakers all the time, right? You you probably want to see me talking about different things all the time rather than just one brand. <coughs> Ooh, the boyfriend voice live stream. What's up, Techno Dad? <laughs> if you guys have not subscribed to Techno Dad yet, please subscribe to Techno Dad. He is a new, what we call in the business as a new tuber. So he's new on the scene. So sign up for Techno Dad. Um, Leland Talbert. Yeah, Leland Talbert is a Patreon subscriber. Thank you, Leland, for being a Patreon subscriber. You didn't have to pay the. You didn't have to super chat me five bucks. You could have just. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. But thank you, do. I do really appreciate that. Uh, when are you going to do the base test? LOL. Um, hey, we got. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up here. So the plan is to get. Um, these. To get these subwoofers in. Well, at least one of them in. Like, I don't think I can really do two of them. Um, so Kyle from Life of Bliss has been trying to talk me into getting some uh, some 24s. So, you know, he's got the 24s, which are these little bad boys here. You know, from what he's telling me, he's going, he's getting down into the single digits. I like 140 dB or something like that. Listen, if I went down to single digits at 140 dB in my in my little theater, I would most definitely blow out some windows. But the, but, but the plan is, uh, I spoke to the guy this morning, actually. Well, it's 12.30 a.m. now, so yesterday morning I spoke to him. And we're, the plan is to get one of these in. He's got an enclosure that's going to be in. I don't, know if, I don't know what the price is for a fully assembled one of these. But you can see here that the, just the driver is twelve seventy five, which is not a bad deal for a twenty four inch subwoofer just for the driver. I mean, if you're a handy kind of person, then you can slap together a box pretty easily, uh, or you can get one of those like pre made boxes that are a flat pack, and you can just uh, like glue them together and then paint them. Uh, I would not do that because I would be too lazy to do that, but that could be an option. But that's that's the plan, man. For for the base test, is to get one of these guys in here. I'm excited to do that. And if it sounds awesome, then the PB16s will be up for sale. Listen, if you want, if if these are awesome sounding, and I sell my PB16s, I will sell my PB16s as a two for one deal. You gotta pay for the shipping. I'll do two PB16s for two thousand dollars. And then shipping, you cover the shipping, whatever that costs. Remember, it would have to be sh freight. And I actually do. I don't even know if I could. I, I think I'm missing one of the boxes. So, I mean, if you're like local, then you can pick them up or something like that. But it would be uh, 
because I would I would sell two of my PP16s for like two grand. So it's like a thousand dollar subwoofer. That's like over fifty percent off. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when uh when this ever comes in. Like I'm excited. I've never I've never heard a twenty four inch subwoofer in my place. So I'm kind of amped up about that. I also have. Let me see. I also got these coming in. Um, I got these two subs. Two twelve. I've heard these on multiple occasions throughout the year, and I've always been impressed with them. These are Martin Logan's. These are Martin Logan Balance Force two twelves. These are dual posed. 12 inch drivers in a sealed enclosure um but their response goes down to 18 hertz but uh you know in room response is probably going to go down lower than that it's two by 850 watts like i said dual 12 inch drivers it's got this uh really nice really nice box so like that's the top of let me see if i can show a picture oh here we go so, you know, back of the subwoofer, there's XLRs, RCAs. You got one 12 on one side, the other 12 on the other side. There's this little smoked glass panel up top here, which I'm pretty sure Emotiva took the design from these Balance Force drivers because uh, Emotiva on their RS-15 has the exact same smoked glass with the control panel, except except they, they put on the back end. This one is here on the top here. And uh, this also has a room correction on board with Arc. I don't know if it's Arc Genesis. Mm, no, it's just regular ARC. So, so we're going to get this in hopefully maybe two weeks or so, quite possibly. These And these things are, I've heard these many times in Magnolia. These have always been, they've, they've always impressed me. I've only, I've only heard them in their own showroom, so it's not like I heard them at somebody's house, but 212s, which, you know, since we were talking about the Stereo Integrity 24-inch, you know, 212s are 24 inches. So, I mean, if you want to do the mathematics, that that, that would be a 24-inch subwoofer, which would be two 24s. So, yeah, man, like, keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. So, that should be exciting. I've been wanting to hear one of these for, for the longest time. And check it out. You can even get a subwoofer with a butcher block on the top. So if you want to cut your cut your carrots and potatoes, you can do that on the Balance Force Butcher Block Edition right there. They're only like five thousand dollars, I think, right? Oh, they don't sell. They're forty five hundred dollars each. Steel. That's a steal. Have you guys heard of Martin Logan subwoofers? Any of these? Have you heard any of these Balance Force subwoofers? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you heard any of these. <coughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. <coughs> Let me out here. Correction, REL HT25 is currently 700 bucks. <coughs> I still got the RELs. The RELs are really uh, they're really good little subwoofers. Uh, I got those in my two front corners. They, they rock. I have them actually crossed over with the left and right speakers. So I have like the left channel mixed with the left sub and I have my right channel crossed down with the right subwoofer. And then uh, I have another subwoofer underneath the center channel, so I got that crossed over for for the uh, for the center channel, which is which is kind of what IMAX Enhance specs out is to have a subwoofer for every channel. So I've been playing around with that with the trend off a little bit. <coughs> what are the best powered monitor speakers? Kef, Bowers, and Wilkins. I really, I, well, out of those two will be the best powered monitor. I didn't even know, does Bowers and Wilkins make a powered monitor? I was unaware that they made a powered monitor. I do know that the Kef, the Kef, Kef has a powered monitors because I have some LSXs here. They've been, they've been kicking for a good year or so. So if you want something kind of small and 
somewhat inexpensive, I guess. They're like a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars. You can go with the Kef LSXs, which I think are the perfect size for for desktop little monitors. But if you need something bigger, you can get the Kef um, L50 wireless that they just came out with, which I think is something like two thousand dollars. David Br electrostatic speakers are the best. Yeah, listen, I used to be. I'd still love the more long speakers. Still, kind of my favorite speakers. But I will be honest with you. I've spent all of last week listening to these Focals, the uh, the Soper ones. Listen, man, them them things rock. Like I didn't. I don't think I made any videos last week because I was so busy listening sitting down listening to these speakers and they're just as like transparent and detailed as as these martin logans maybe it's the beryllium tweeter or something else but damn they sound good they sound really good uh where where are they there's these guys here like if you guys have not seen the unboxing video that we did um these are the Soper ones. I could have did the the two or the threes, the bigger ones, but listen, I hate having gigantic boxes in my room, so these were like the the best option, especially to fit four of these in my in my living room. These things are so good sounding, like super good sounding, and they're and they're only they're fucking tiny. I mean, they're not tiny, but they're small. They're not like an electrostat where it takes up like this huge ass space um it's just a little bookshelf and it sounds phenomenal i love it i might keep it i'm not sure yet i'm kind of on the fence about keeping it we shall see uh, hopefully uh, yeah i would like to keep it but then again they have a model above it but everything that i've read this one is almost is pretty much like 95 percent of what their more expensive one sounds like but uh listen between like this one and the martin logan's pretty freaking close dude pretty close i didn't think i could get that kind of detail out of a out of a tweeter but it's really close though <coughs> they even have that same kind of like three-dimensional sound that you get from a martin logan oh so good dude so good and i don't even listen i don't even sit down and listen to music because i don't have that kind of patience to sit there and just listen to two channel but I must have sat there for like six hours, like multiple days, just listening to different beats. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the Barrows and Wilkins Formation Duo. I totally forgot about those speakers. You know, I think they made those speakers before they went over to... I think, uh, doesn't sound United own them now. <coughs> but I think they created those, from what I was told from one of the reps. I think they created those because they wanted to have something um since everybody was making wireless products and they were owned by some that silicon the, that silicon company or whatever it was and they just wanted to have a bunch of these wireless speakers out so i don't think it was like made to the the same the same quality degree as what the previous owners were doing with bowers and wilkins so I mean, listen, I haven't heard the formation speakers. I've heard the soundbar. The soundbar sounds like shit. But uh, I haven't heard the actual speakers themselves. I mean, I would assume they would sound pretty good. But I think I don't know what direction they're going to go under Sound United. Hopefully it's better than what it was previously. But, you know, that's 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 what I've heard from inside the Bowers and Wilkins uh, camp. I would still go with Kef though, because these Kefs, they sound they sound good. Um, electrostatic don't seem to be very dynamic. What? Clearly, you haven't heard about uh, an electrostatic speaker. I'm sure Techno Dad could tell you. Techno Dad is still living with his uh, ESL Lexus. Listen, even the ESL Lexus, which are only five grand a pair, they sound like way better than the speakers. I preferred the ESLXs over the Bowers and Wilkins 803s, which were $18,000 a pair. And the ESLXs are only $5,000 a pair. So it's like, you really don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get awesome performance. 
like just like the detail and everything on those uh those Martin Logan ESLXs just you know just blew the the bowers away and the bigger ones that we had in for a review was just like night and day difference with the bowers and logans and let's not forget the I mean, at least the ones that I had had powered basically powered 12 inch subs in them which which the 803s you know you had to power them up with a sub over because the bass on those was just like not, listen we were listening to like drake and some rap music those 803s they didn't do nothing i mean they just like just dropped off just pop like you would hear the bass pop but it was just like there'd be nothing there whereas the martin logans you know you got you got powered you got powered drivers in there and things were and things were like shaking the entire house like I said, even the ALCLXs, they have dual eights in them. Them things, them things rocked as well. <clears throat> um, I used to have the MEK, not bad at all. Now running straight digital from Altitude 32. Digital amp with filters applied. Amp internal deck, no other conversions, each speaker. There you go, we can go that route. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I haven't even dealt into the uh, whole crossover thing yet. Am I, am my altitude? <coughs> A twenty-four inch subwoofer has the surface area of four twelves. Oh, really? I know one can use an old AVR as external amps. Is there a big difference compared to using a dedicated external amp? Uh, wait, on those questions. Sorry, I was thinking about something else. Uh, well, remember, I mean, why would you use an AVR as an external amp? Remember, uh, amplifier's job is one thing, whereas inside of an AVR, you got a whole bunch of circuitry that could cause interference is doing multiple things plus you're kind of divvying up power over one tiny little toroid um cleaner signal path of an amplifier it's definitely going to be more dynamic than an avr amplifier i think that's kind of a what i'm trying to think of what other avrs that i've heard that were like awesome like just like great sounding i think the last kind of avr that i heard that was like sounded like a separate amplifier was uh i think like denon 5805 or something like that either denon 5800 or 5805 that's when it when that was like that that denon receiver that was like double stacked almost or and there was that one and there was like a pioneer one that was uh, very similar as well like back in the early 2000s when avrs were just like monstrous behemoths now everything is like super small and compact they're like class d they're shoving all kinds of electronics in them but yeah man you know separate amplifiers are just gonna sound cleaner as an old avr of course if you can't if you can't swing a, a separate amplifier and then you just want to use that then uh, you know give it a shot see if you see if you like the performance Uh, Bruce Carter says, Paradigm subs are great. You will be pleased with the Balanced Force 212. Yeah, looking forward to it. <coughs> oh, no, we didn't arrange. Oh, uh, what else we got here? Full cal. Uh, Eli says, Full cals are way better than shitty clips. I didn't say it, but that's what he said. <laughs> Eli said that focals are better than uh, clips. Did you say shitty clips? Oh no, you spelled you spelled it wrong. But that's that's what he said though. <laughs> so let's uh, hold on. Let me take this off. Let me take this off. So when I I put up a video for Total Recall the other day, and. Uh, how many people how many people have seen the total recall video have any any of you guys seen the total recall review that i did if you guys have seen it then uh you know leave a little leave a little little comment that you've seen the total recall video and then now we'll talk about that after you leave a little message down there 
Um, bah, 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 bah. But we did. I did the Total Recall video, and which is which is this one here, Total Recall, which is a nice transfer. N not one of the best ones. Better than it was better than Terminator Two, most deaf. But um, but there were points in the video, points in the points in the transfer where. The quality was kind of like really shoddy. <clears throat> Whereas like really low bitrate when you can see like macro blocking and all that. Especially like during the red skies out at Mars, like the exterior shots where there was like more, uh, sorry, like a red, like it would shift from like a, like a dark red to a lighter red. But, uh, you know, I mentioned that, which is cool. And then I talked about the audio. I talked about the audio in Total Recall. And this is one of... One of the rare movies that I've given below a five. So I gave it a four because it sounded like maybe I mixed it myself on Adobe Premiere or something like that. Like I just took like a two channel mix and I tried to make it sound like it was a full 11 channels. And like I didn't do a good job at it. And the bass was kind of a non-existent. So, so I gave it a four. And I'm sure if you guys seen the video. I said, listen, I'm going to give this a four. Maybe I missed something. And perhaps it might be my system. Maybe you guys have a better system than I do. I don't know. And then I, I snickered. I said, I don't know. Maybe you guys, maybe I missed something. Or maybe you guys have a better system than I do. Maybe I missed something. <laughs> Apparently, that, that little snicker made it seem like I was an arrogant asshole or something like that. How many, how many of you guys remember that video? And how many of you guys thought that was an arrogant comment on my part? Anyways, I think that's the longest thread. If you go into that comment section, there's a pretty long, th there's a pretty long thread about me being arrogant in the comment section. And of course, being myself, I said, hey, thanks for noticing me being arrogant. And thanks for watching. And I'm not going to apologize if you, if you think I'm arrogant. I'm slightly paraphrasing that, but that's the gist of it. But I would like to know if you guys think that I'm an arrogant guy. If I am an arrogant guy, should I have to apologize for being an arrogant guy or should I just be me? Or do we just have a lot of, a lot of snowflakes in the comment section who have their feelings hurt very easily for whatever reason? Or maybe you can't take a joke or maybe you... Uh, you can't take sarcasm very good or you're just reading into things where well, you shouldn't be reading into things. I think when I do these videos, I talk about the videos I want to talk about. I talk about the products I want to talk about. I talk about the movies I want to talk about. I rate these movies what I want to rate them. And when I do my videos, I say, listen, I'm going to share my thoughts on these videos. They are by no means a de facto standard. They're just my thoughts on what I think something looks like or something sounds like or something performs. So that's what I talk about in these videos as far as like my own user experience. Never, never in any of my videos do I say I'm a professional this and that. I'm not a professional TV calibrator. I'm not a professional audio calibrator. I'm none of that. I'm just, I'm just a normal guy like everybody else. I'm a normal guy just like you. I'm sure you're a normal guy just like me. But whatever I say in my videos, it's never directed towards anybody. Because I'm going to say I know about 99.9% .9 none of you guys out there on a personal level. So whatever I say in these videos, I just say I just say it off the top of my mind, whatever I want to say. If you take if you take an offense to that, if you take offense to that, you want to call me out in the uh, you want to call me out in the comment section. If you want to call me arrogant, you want to call me an asshole, you want to call me whatever. Listen, that's cool. But there's a pretty good chance I might respond to that. And just because I respond to that, if that makes me more of an asshole, if I tell you, listen, I'm not going to apologize for being an asshole because you think I'm one. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to change my ways just because your feelings were hurt. If you if you if you're too delicate of a person that you can't understand the difference between you know 
a little sly joke or maybe a little bit of sarcasm or maybe just me somebody being facetious or whoever it is that comes on the channel and says something that uh, doesn't strike a chord or whatever listen if you want if once you get on and start calling names then if somebody responds to you for calling you a name i don't think you should be getting mad at the person that you attacked them first do you know what i mean like if somebody came up to you and slapped you in the face there's probably going to be some kind of retaliation and then to continuously try to denigrate that person and then and then try to denigrate their living their living <laughs> their living environment just because you have nothing else to say that's kind of a that's kind of really reaching so i mean listen if you get on if you get on my videos and if your feelings are hurt because maybe I give a little giggle, if your feelings are hurt because I might review something that you out of that's out of your price range that maybe you can't afford, you shouldn't take that personally. Just because the channel's name is Spare Change and it's not something super affordable, in what universe does spare change mean super affordable? Are we talking about my spare change? Or are we talking about your spare change? You shouldn't get your feelings hurt about whatever I'm talking about, especially when it comes down to dollar amount or if especially if it comes down to my personality, because I'm definitely not going to apologize for my personality. I'm not going to apologize for whatever products I'm reviewing just because you feel it's out of your price category. So I wanted to address that because I don't know if any of these people are in the chat right now, but listen, if you are a delicate individual and you can't tell the difference between a joke or whatever it is that's going on in my videos, whatever I say or whatever any of my guests say on the channel, then feel free not to watch the video or feel free not to watch the channel. There are plenty of other channels out there and do not, please don't threaten me by saying I'm going to unsubscribe because that's totally fine that you're right you don't have to watch my video you don't have to subscribe but it's not really going to hurt me if you take your one view away just because you got your just because you took something the wrong way and got your feelings hurt i feel bad that you got your feelings hurt i guess not really though but if you did get your feelings hurt don't get upset and try to vent and call names okay that's that's all i wanted to say all right. <clears throat> uh, they read them for the cars they can't afford. You know, listen, like people, people make videos about Ferraris and Lamborghinis, and you know damn well ninety percent of those people can't afford Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Listen, I, when I review like a receiver that's like uh, you know four thousand, five thousand dollars, I get so many people like, hey man, why can't you afford a? Why can't you review a five hundred dollar AVR, two hundred dollar Sony? I'm not going to do that. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> Yo, same thing. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Pana. Cables. Cables. <laughs> you talk about it. Watch them lose it. Anytime you talk about cables, people lose their shit too. God damn. I got some sensitive motherfuckers in this channel. <coughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, I wouldn't worry about what other people think. Anyone remember Steve Simmels of Stereo Review? Lots of people thought his reviews were arrogant, but people remembered him. <laughs> <coughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. Eat some concrete and hard enough. <laughs> uh, oh, Mia Francis. What's up, Mia? I haven't seen you in the chat. Well, I would say I haven't seen you in the chat in a while, but I don't think I haven't been on for a while. Yo, just like with Elias's clip rant, yo, he, <laughs> the man voiced his opinion on clip speakers. And this is this is one of those videos. Like, if you haven't seen the video, go watch the video. It's I think it's like uh, eight minutes long or something like that. But this is a video that just keeps on giving. Like, I still get comments like all the time on it, <laughs> just because he, just because he said, he, just because he said clips were like the the modern day bows. <laughs> I didn't partake in the conversation. I just let him vent. And uh, a lot of hate for lies. <coughs> we got a kick out of it, though. I got a kick out of it. 
it's cool because it, it's pretty rare that you would see i don't think I, I don't think in like the audio world at least you, you don't hear people like bashing on a specific brand like i don't think i've heard i'm trying to think like all the other home theater channels or av channels out there that uh that do reviews nobody really says anything particularly negative you know about them at least not like like in a long form video it <laughs> like goes on a rant about them because uh there's always like that fear of like like if we were gonna like Klipsch is a pretty damn big company it's like one of the biggest you know what i mean like you can buy them at like best buy and maybe walmart i'm sure you can buy them at walmart and amazon you can buy them anywhere you want you know what i mean it's not like going it's not like buying a focal or a martin logan you can't just go to walmart and buy a buy a focal speaker but you can you can probably buy a clips there or some form of it but usually when these channels or some outlets do a review on a specific brand and you can't really see, you can't you can't bash them like that because you risk not not getting their not getting their support in the future but as you guys know i haven't done a single we haven't done a single clips video on this channel whatsoever i i think that is legit the first clip speaker that we did it wasn't even about like a specific model so it was kind of like free reign so we could just talk about so he could just talk about the shit whenever he wants to talk about it so if he wanted to shit it on he could shit on it if he wants to without any kind of like repercussion i think uh i think the only kind of products that i've ever like shit on was like i think it was like an arcam pre-pro which which they didn't support the channel like i paid for that myself so i kind of crapped on it a little bit and i think there's a, a couple of other stuff that i maybe wasn't too uh humble on or, or nice about but I was, I was humble in the response though i gave it gave it an okay review i didn't like say clips is the new bows or anything like that but listen you gotta respect somebody that's gonna talk some shit about a big brand on what i think my channels i think my channel is influential enough where if we say something like clips is trashy then <laughs> this is a good chance somebody might want to sell their speakers off because it's always like Klipsch, Klipsch is a safe brand to buy. Like it's it's a decent enough brand to buy and it's affordable. They have multiple different price points. And, uh, you know, I, I guess you could kind of say they spread themselves a little bit thin as far as like the quality is concerned. But, you know, there's, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta hit different points for different people and different budgets. So that's cool. But, you know, at the same time, listen, people got down on the guy just because he was uh voicing his opinion and listen if you can't take it then listen don't don't leave a don't come down on the guy don't go to his channel and attack the the house that he lives in or wh whatever like people do that shit like it's fucking bad it's so bad uh and, th and there's one oh, there's always one thing i always tell myself too is like listen i i gotta i got like one usually usually if you guys leave comments in my videos, sometimes I'll leave a comment, sometimes I won't. Like 90% of the time, I don't comment back because I try not to engage too much because it always leads into some some other stupid conversation that happens. But every once in a while, somebody has, says something and it always strikes a little nerve. Then I get into these humongous conversations like the Total Recall one. And, uh, and then I have to control myself and be as nice as possible and then stop before I start really calling these guys little snowflakes in the comment section which i don't which i don't want to do but you know who you are though you know who you are i, I just wish i wish these guys would come on the live chat and just kind of kind of attack me in the live chat you know what i mean <laughs> that, that never happens though why <coughs> or, uh, all right, all right. rant over rant over Am I going to do the 4K Hobbit trilogy? Uh, you know, I think we spoke about this about an hour ago. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't really say. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, clips are expensive in Australia. I think everything is expensive in Australia, right? I guess it would depend on what model that you guys have in Australia. Like, what would the price be? Uh, what, what particular model, like the reference or premiere or whatever they have nowadays? Well, 
we're all entitled to our own opinions. That's what's great. Damn right, man. You're entitled to your own opinion. But if you come on my channel and you attack me with your own opinion, then if you want to make sure you got something very intelligent to back it up with and don't get your feelings hurt when I come back at you. That's all I'm saying. But yes, you are entitled to your own opinion. <coughs> Uh, Quicks looks like a good Australian brand. Would love to check them out sometime. Yeah, I think uh, I think What's His Face has it right over on Build Montage. He's got the the wall of sound, the wall of Quicks. Definitely looks cool. I don't think I would have any place to uh, put those in my place, to have like windows and stuff behind my screen. But it does look cool. I wouldn't mind checking them out myself. I'm getting a new Denon 3700H or want to externally power the front speakers instead of getting a new external amp. I want to use my Denon as the external amp. Uh, give it a shot. I know a lot of people do them. I know a lot of people. I know there's a bunch of folks that take multiple multiple uh, receivers and kind of turn them into mini, mini, mini Trinovs and they try to like extract... 32 channels out of them by linking up two 16 channel AVRs. <laughs> it is a little crazy sounding, but they, you know, listen, people do it though. People do do it. Um, MM Edit X. He says, Shane. Yes. What would you like to say? What speakers are better than the Arendo sound for a family room? Speaker better than the Rental Sound? I mean, there's a bunch of speakers that I'm sure are better than the Rental Sound. The Rental Sounds are really good, though. You know? But I'm sure there's a bunch. It really depends on your budget. Ever looked at into virtual pinball machines? Uh, I have not looked at virtual pinball machines. I would on. I mean, I've played pinball on my iPad before. If that's what you're talking about. All right, let's just take one more question here. Uh, Shane, are you waiting for Tenet 4K Blu-ray IMAX? Uh, yeah, yeah, the Tenet, the Tenet, I should have the Tenet disc, hopefully, maybe next week. Maybe this week, next week. We'll see. I mean, it's supposed to ship it pretty soon, so. Mm, anything else? Do, 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 do. I just bought the Monolith HTP1 and cannot get it to work with the Mini DSP for the life of me. Man, I can't say that. I can't. Sorry. I, I think you would just have to go... I think you would have to go Mini DSP into your subs. Like, I, I've never used the Mini DSP, so I can't really say. But um, I guess you have to go from pre-out into the Mini DSP, into the subs, and then Mini DSP... EQ your subs with the mini DSP and then you can just have the HTP one do the uh, do the re room correction from there. I think you go from subwoofer pre out into the mini DSP. If I am uh, not mistaken. <clears throat> but alright guys, you know, we're coming up uh, 90 minutes almost exact hour and 29 minutes. Yo, thanks for staying up. Uh, fun chat. Check in the next video, guys.